This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. I am currently melting a little bit in Florida, but what can you do about that? Um... This week we were supposed to have both the cat and the Omega. The Omega is off doing uh, anniversary things with Diamanda Hagen, and to them I say, "Yay, squee!" <laughs> uh, but we do have the cat. Yay! You have me. Yes. Consolation prize me. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah, we we were talking a little bit, actually a little bit about the weather, and I'm melting down here, and and, and with the way Florida has been, at least for fall. Uh, it gets like really, really warm during the day, and then at night it kind of cools off quite a bit, kind of like out in the desert, except not quite the extremes. And cats, cat, you were sitting there. You were saying what? What was it? Thirty-five the other day? Yeah, I mean, it, it's been getting to like the mid sixties, maybe like uh, low seventies here during the day, but it's been freezing at night. Like the coldest we've gotten was thirty-five degrees. But it's been in, like, the 40s and 50s in the morning, and it's been pretty chilly. I want your weather. I had to get on my winter coat. That is so not cool. <laughs> see, see, I have, well, my winter coat also doubles as my uh, reviewer on stream type costume. <laughs> and, and so it's like, it's, it's like, I want to be able to wear that more often and not be, you know, sweating everything off of my body at the same oh. time. You know, which is why I really loved having it when I went to MAGFest, because, you know, nice, blustery, cold winter, and my coat's nice and warm. <laughs> oh, and if you're watching this on any of the videos, or, or hell, it's probably even up on the iTunes version, uh, you see brand new title card. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is awesome. Becky finally got it finished. It is, it is amazing. It is my new desktop background right now <laughs> as well, because, again... Amazing, talented artist. She's also an award-winning animator. Go, 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 go in, in, in Pimper. Patreon.com slash Becky Hop. <laughs> Which I will probably mention again at the end of the show. Because I am redundant like that. Ah, oh, so it's been, a, it's been a week. How's your week been, Kat? Oh, you know, work is hell. But uh, otherwise, you know, pretty okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I seem to remember you, you, you going on about something on your Facebook, something about a movie or something. I was going to wait until we were doing our shout outs, but, uh, Oh, you know what? Let's, let's segue right into that. Let's, let's just do sweet. it. Sweet. So, uh, this week, uh, saw the release of Space Ninja by Neon Harbor, which, uh, for those who don't know, we, uh, well, they did a, basically what ended up being uh, an animated miniseries online in 2011 and award-winning because it won a telly award for, I think, animation because it's absolutely gorgeous. And I play two of the characters in the show, two, two villains, of course. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's just fantastic. And it got recut as a film and they added some extra features. And I think they actually added some extra animation. I'm not 100% sure on that. Yeah. But uh, it just came out Friday. And it's just absolutely amazing. I was pretty stoked um, for a lot of the special features. And it is available now on neonharbor.com. Sweet. And I just, I have to pimp it out because Space Ninja is really, really stellar. Sorry, I didn't mean to make a space joke, but <laughs> it's really very good. Uh, I, I'll have to see if I can pick it up sometime. Uh, money is a little tight, but I will, I will, I will definitely give it a give it a try if I can. Um, speaking of movies, you've been in. weren't you, weren't you in like uh, Brad Jones's movie Shot on Shitio? What's what's up with that? Has that been? I released? I don't know because he hasn't told me anything about it, so huh. I am not able to even speculate. I just showed up and did some filming. Yeah, and and I think somebody I want to say somebody on his side did some of the vlogging stuff for it, and it looked like it was really fun. Yeah, I mean, what I did with it was pretty insane. Um, uh, but uh, I don't know where production stands on that. It seemed like it was sort of at a standstill where they were waiting on something to happen, but I don't know where it's at now. Yeah. Oh, well, but I, I'm actually kind of looking forward to that. Yeah, because I watched the Cinema Snob movie, and I enjoyed the hell out of it. Not for those reasons. I genuinely liked the movie. Um 
and and it's a lot of fun. I I kind of want to go see. I kind of want to see some of Brad's other work too. I've heard Paranoia is kind of good. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, anyway, since since we did segue into the shoutouts, I do have my own as well. Um, a, a week we both are prepared with a shoutout. How about that? <laughs> Dear God in heaven, must be a full moon. Well, I actually know it was more of a new moon, but but the full shush, moon will come up soon. Shush with your logic. <laughs> It is not wanted here. There we go. Blame it on the moon anyway. It's the moon. Anyway, uh, mine is uh, Miss Bunny Bell over on YouTube. Uh, she does Let's Plays, uh, little things here and there. Recently, she's been doing more uh, just Cards Against Humanity videos with like her boyfriend, her other friends, and her own mother, to which I say, okay. good on you. <laughs> I, I play think... Cards Against Humanity with my entire family, like my grandmother has played. Oh, my God. We're a pretty cool family. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, do, I could see my parents playing it. I, I just don't know if I would want to play along with them because of the way I end up playing. <laughs> like, uh, we were playing last night. We got a whole group together. We were playing last night. And they have it now. If you play it online, you have, like, uh, custom decks you can actually put into the thing. And, of course, I made up one based on the site and the shows on the site and everything. And there's one that is basically suggestions from Reddit. Which, as we all know, Reddit is the most wretched hive of scum and villainy outside of Moss Eisley and 4chan. And there were some really dark ones in there. Oh, God. There was, like, um, one card about getting gang raped by a certain thing or whatever. And another card was, oh, God, I, I can't even quite remember it right off the top of my head. I, I don't know why. I remember the gang rape one, but I don't – but I forget the other one. That That's – that. wow. That – what does that say about me? But I ended up getting both of those cards in my hand. I played the first one. Everybody freaked the fuck out because it's like, A, I needed to get rid of it, and B, it kind of fit. <laughs> and and if you follow uh, uh, some of me and some of my friends on uh, Twitter, that, that's where um, uh, one of my friends says that I am uh, – what was it? Uh, a sick fuck is what she called me. And <laughs> – well, I mean, she's met you before, so... Yeah, yeah, she has. So, she she knows this. She knew this going in. <laughs> but it's also Cards Against Humanity. You're supposed, to, you're supposed to be a sick fuck, I think. Oh. But this isn't about me and my, my Cards Against Humanity thing. This is about Miss Bunny Bell. Um, she's also currently got some Minecraft stuff up. Um, uh, she's got a... I'm looking at it right here. A Speedrunners with Crazy Nerdy Gaming... A couple of those videos up, and those are just some of her more recent ones. Uh, check her out; she's at Miss Bunny Bell on YouTube. Uh, that's B U N N I E, uh, not not with a Y. And seriously, check her out; she's pretty neat. In fact, she just yesterday, as of recording, she actually put up a new video. And when she does, what I do like about when she does like her update videos or vlog videos or whatever, she doesn't come on screen with like her face or anything. It's it's not hidden. Her her actual website does feature her face. But when she does the videos, she comes on with like a little machinima version of her, and it's really cute. So it's all awesome and everything. Ah, so uh yeah, so that that's gonna be our shout outs for this week. And I got a lot of news put in here this week. Oh boy. <laughs> and so our first one. Uh, <laughs> I put this in here because we need a laugh. We really do need a laugh. Facing an onslaught of federal courts striking down bans on same-sex marriage, Catholic League President Bill Donahue has called upon Catholics to support a constitutional marriage amendment stating marriage may only be between one man and one woman. Mr. Donahue, what fucking year are you living in? 1882. I guess. Invoking the words of President Barack Obama, who said in 2004, I believe that marriage is the union between a man and a woman. Now, for me as a Christian, it is also a sacred union. God's in the mix, Donahue claims. God got thrown from the mix in 2012 when Obama, when Obama ran for re-election. You know, that made me think of something. Do people call the president just Obama? Because that'd be Bama. kind of – yeah, President Obama. I'm sure rednecks do because they don't actually know things. Yeah. Well, I, you know what? I live in a town full of rednecks. I can go around. Oh, what do you call the president? Obama. Okay. <laughs> According to Donahue, the president tossed God again this week when he called for same-sex marriage to be recognized as a constitutional right. Good on you, President Obama. Hmm. 
And Dewan... No, 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 wait, wait, wait. This is Bill Donahue. As far as I know, he's not Southern. Um, you know what? This is just... He's whiny. In doing so, he teared up a confrontation between our long-established constitutional right to religious liberty and his newly invented right to gay marriage, Donahue wrote. He blamed unelected judges and called for Catholics to rise up and return power to the people. Well, considering the majority of the people... You know, the majority of the states at this point are, are for same-sex marriage. In fact, they pretty much got most of the West. I think Montana is like the only one out West that that really is not there yet. I mean, they got, they got fucking Utah. I was going to say, if they got Utah, they have everywhere. They've yeah. got the weirdest place you can possibly get. I know. Well, second weirdest place. They don't have Florida yet. I know, but Utah's got all the crazies. Yeah. I mean, Florida is its own special brand of crazy, but Utah is the Mormons. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, and my best friend lives out there, and I asked her, okay, so what's it, what is it like to live in a state where if you wanted to, you could go marry another woman? And while I'm pretty sure she's excited and she, when she heard the news, she squeed and everything, she played it off to me like, uh, eh, man, it just feels like any other day. <laughs> uh but yeah, but that's how she do. Uh, contrary to what many have said, this issue is not over. Were it not for elected judges overturning the express will of the people in state after state, in attempts to subvert marriage properly understood would have not would not have succeeded. He wrote, "We need to return power to the people by considering a constitutional amendment. The time is right for Catholics to support the efforts of Arch Archbishop Salvatore Cordilio." Cord Cordelion, the bishop's point man on marriage. In February, he called for support of the federal marriage protection amendment. Well, you know what, Mr. Donahue, I, I I will give you that. We do need a constitutional amendment. We really do, except the other direction from where you're trying to go. Yeah, because you're an idiot. Yeah. Um. These these are people who uh they they say the power of the people, but when they say people, they only mean people like them. They only mean the people who go to their church or believe in their religion or live in their small town with really really small town ways of life. Mm -hmm. Um. They're not talking about actual people who live all over the country. Um, they're not talking about the people of different races and different religions and different creeds. They're talking about only people like them. And they live in this little bubble where they only listen to the people who say what they want to hear. So they think everybody agrees with them. Yeah. But they don't. You know, that bubble is about to be pricked by a giant prick, if you get my, if you get my meaning. <clears throat> because that would be amazing. Oh, but speaking of religion and speaking of Florida, <laughs> if we must, we must, because an atheist group plans to distribute at several Florida, Florida public high schools pamphlets that depict an anthropomorphic Bible sexually assaulting a woman. OK, I'm going to take a second here because the wording of this sentence is horrible. OK, at the, the atheist group plans to distribute public. You know, pamphlets that depict an anthropomorphic Bible sexually assaulting a woman at several Florida public high schools. That's how it should go. Whoever whoever wrote this first sentence and whoever was the editor, you you, you just you just you just smack in the face. Seriously, that that ah. Oh. Okay, the Freedom from Religion Foundation intends to hand out the pamphlets titled "An X-Rated Book: Sex and Obscenity in the Bible." to protest the decision by Orange County Public Schools to allow outside religious groups to take part in National Religious Freedom Day, reported the Christian Science Monitor. Oh boy. The, the groups will be allowed to passively distribute Bibles and other approved literature to students during the January 16th event, which previously drew protest by the Satanic Temple. I think if you look at the content of that brochure and what is actually in the Bible and some of the things that are in the Bible in terms of sex and compare that to the cover of the pamphlet, the cover is pretty tame compared to anything that's in the Bible, said uh, Andrew Seidel, an attorney for FFRF. Uh, the pamphlet highlights biblical passages about sex, nudity, and circumcision that FFRF considers obscene, and its cover depicts a Bible with a human face, arms, and legs reaching under the dress of a woman who is screaming and attempting to escape. The imagery 
because I, I, when I looked at the original article, they do have a picture of it. The imagery of it, 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 it definitely gets your attention. Uh, maybe might be a little overlined with the imagery, but at the same time, if that's the tamest thing about what they're pointing out, because I'll admit it's been a while since I've you know you know looked at a Bible and, and studied it and everything. I could name a few things like oh like say if you you know if you rape somebody, then you could pay like what was it fifty shekels or whatever, and then you can own that woman because apparently you know women are just you know fuck cattle. I don't know, uh, and you've got Lot be getting you know uh, Lot's daughters getting him drunk and then banging him so they can continue the family line. You know that sort of thing, and and so many other things. Not to mention, oh, uh, what was it? What was it? One of the most horrible things to ever happen. Oh yeah, in the book, this this god that everybody loves and honors and adores and everything, he flooded the entire goddamn world because he he didn't like a whole bunch of people. But but it was all right because he saved Noah and his family. Uh, but that that makes it okay. And then he put up the rainbow and says, yeah, I'm never going to do that again. Mm, yeah. Um, <laughs> any any thoughts so far, Kat? Um, so as for the bringing this to a school thing, I mean, this is pretty vivid imagery to try and get away with at a school. And uh, for me, it's a little bit like fighting fire with fire. You talk about, oh, well, the Bible is really terrible and, and it's full of all these terrible things. And we're just trying to point that out to you. There are ways to go about it without sinking to the same level. And I don't think that they really managed to do that. But I like what they're trying to do. They're trying to bring people to some level of reality by going, hey, look, this thing that you talk about is pretty terrible. Yeah, it is. And the atheist group also intends to pass out previously banned pamphlets about abortion and other topics that school officials say show God is hateful, arrogant, sexist, and cruel. Well, yeah. Yeah. The group also plans to distribute copies of Jesus is Dead by Robert Price, which school officials previously prohibited as not age-appropriate for high school students. You're in high school. I think you should be able to read whatever the fuck you want. You know, I, I think you should be able to read whatever the fuck you want anyway, but especially in high school. I read some crazy shit in high school that was part of my curriculum. Yeah? I mean, hell, part of our curriculum well, – well, it wasn't like direct curriculum. You know, we, we had like the, the advanced reading list or whatever that we actually had to read and then take like little computer quizzes or whatever. One of the thing, one of the books we had was Brave New World, which I read. I actually aced the thing even though I barely remember the plot now. <laughs> Which it's is pretty bad on me, but that was one of the things we read. Um, oh, God. I mean, hell, I remember in high school, I read, you know, like the original North and South trilogy. And I mean, like the novels, not not the miniseries that also came out. I mean, like the novels, they get pretty damn graphic. It's like it's like one of the characters dies and they talk about how the bullet just like lifts, lifts off the top of his skull and everything. It's like, holy shit. I, I don't know if it was just me, but I had to read Sula in, in high school. Mm. And there is a scene. Well, first off, we had so many scenes where we're like, let's discuss if this is rape or not. <laughs> oh, and uh, and then there was a scene that really scarred me. That was um, a, a mother feels like her son is too clingy and therefore is trying to crawl back into the womb. So she sets her house on fire and burns her son alive. Uh, What? But an atheist pamphlet depicts God as being cruel, and that's terrible. But we're definitely allowed to read a book where a woman burns her son alive. Uh-huh. I should just be reading Neil Gaiman first off. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so messed up. Some of the stuff that you have to read because it's, because it's, um, it's good literature or it's classic literature, you know, yeah. depicts some crazy shit going on. Yeah. And and somehow we've determined that it's great literature and that justifies us reading it whereas something informative like in, you know like learning about what the Bible actually says that's considered too incendiary. Yeah. Yeah. And people <laughs> people who were not protesting this, they probably read their Bible and they're like, yeah. 
In fact, probably the only issues they have was like some of the issues that you were that you had talked about just a minute ago. You know, you know, sinking down to their level, fighting fire with fire, and all of that. There are probably better ways of going about it. You know, not you know having an anthropomorphic Bible raping a woman on your cover would yeah get your attention, but maybe not the best way to open up. <laughs> I mean, just I say, just let the words in, in the pages themselves speak for themselves. You don't need that imagery. Yeah, seriously, you could just blow up the words really big and print out a sheet of paper and just hand it and go. This is what you're reading. This is what you're teaching children. Yes, and if, and and to be fair, if they want to read and they want to learn it all themselves, let them do it. If after that point they still want to be a Christian, if they still want to believe in that God and and Jesus and everything, then you know what? More power to them. Just as so long as they don't shove it down our throats. The moment they right. start doing I, I that. I feel like as long as you are making an educated decision based on, you know, not just belief, but also, you know, facts. Like, if you've read something and decide that you want to believe that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, unless you decide not to believe in global warming. Yeah, which is like, yeah, global warming is not real yet, you know. Uh, the North Pole is not quite the pool that Robin Williams is, uh, had claimed like last decade is. But it's getting there. It's getting there. We're we're kind of broiling down here in the south, uh, and from what I understand, this winter is supposed to bring down another polar vortex. In in which case, uh, <laughs> let's not. Uh, I would I would rather just just uh, you know, global warming is a thing. Climate change is a thing. Whichever way you want to look at it, you know, how do we fix it? And well, actually, we know how to fix it. We have green fuels. We have, you know, the wind power, the solar power. We even have hydropower. Why well, not use those more? See, we can't fix it. We can just do less harm, and we choose not to. Okay, fair enough. Well, well, instead of fix, how about survive it? How are we gonna screw over the next couple of generations less? Yeah, or hopefully not at all. I would rather not. Oh, speaking of screwing people over. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hi. Republican Dan Sebring, who is running to represent Wisconsin's 4th District House of Representatives, told Think Progress he suspects a political move behind the Supreme Court's recent ruling putting the state's voter ID law on hold. The United States Supreme Court said we can't implement it for this election, he said at a Milwaukee County Republicans party this week. My personal feeling is that this is a play to steer the outcome of the gubernatorial election so that Scott Walker wouldn't have a chance of getting on the ticket in 2016 for the White House. I think that's what they're trying to do. Well, if he doesn't have a chance for getting on the 2016 ticket for the White House, I don't think it has anything to do with, with steering the outcome of any gubernatorial election. Maybe it's just the people don't fucking want him, you know. And and of course you can't deal with that. So, so and and it always seems like more and more recently it's Republicans trying these tactics too. That um, yeah, we're gonna gerrymander this, gerrymander that, move all this around, shuffle it around, and hey, look at this. You know, less people voted for me in this, but more people voted for me here. And and so yeah, oh, it's all this so political gerrymandering. It's like one vote, one. For, you know, one person, one vote. What's wrong with that? We have the technology to keep track of it all. Uh, last week, the Supreme Court halted the state voter, state's voter ID law without providing a clear explanation for its decision. However, a short dissenting opinion by Justice Samuel Al Alito suggested that the majority was relying on a 2006 decision which found that altering election law close to an election could result in voter confusion and cons consequent incentive to remain away from the polls. Federal trial judge Lynn Edelman struck down Wisconsin's voter ID law in April before a federal appeals court reinstated the measure in September. But many of the event expressed concern that Republicans would lose without a voter ID law. You don't need a voter ID oh, law. Oh no, if we can't sway the voting to us, we're going to lose. Oh no. And maybe you deserve to lose. Just a little bit. If, if the only way you can win is by not playing fair, then you do not deserve to win. It's, True story. Yeah, it is that simple. And, and even the, the last paragraph in this article here, research has shown that voter fraud is rare. A study of votes, votes cast in Wisconsin during the 2004 election found just seven cases of fraud. Not 700, not 7,000. 
not 777, just 7. Less than 10. 10 minus 3. None of which could have been prevented by a voter ID law. Such a measure could, however, disproportionately disenfranchise African Americans, low-income citizens, and other groups who tend to vote for Democrats. Gee! It's, it's, it's like what we're saying is true, and it's, and it's seeming more demonstrably so. Republicans don't care. And when I say Republicans, I mean the ones in power. I don't mean your average Joe voting Republican. The ones in power, the GOP, they only care about money and that money going to old, white, crusty motherfuckers. They just want power. Now, that's not to say that Democrats don't want power for themselves at well, as well, rather. But it seems to me that Democrats, at least for the most part, well, generally showing a little bit less competency in getting shit done, thanks in no small part to the Republicans acting like you know spoiled children who, you, who, who just wants to just rant and rave and throw temper tantrums because they can't play with their favorite toy. But at the least, the Democrats are not showing too, much, too many signs that they just want to fuck everybody over. And who knows? Maybe they do, but maybe they do in a different way. I haven't seen it. Have you, Kat? I, I mean, not really. It, it just seems to me like the conservative crowd who really are just the crusty old white men, they just genuinely don't believe in equality. They just don't. They really genuinely say that they do, but they see themselves and other people like them as being better. Um, and therefore, people who aren't like them, the disenfranchised, the, the poor, the minorities, just don't deserve to have the same things as them. They don't deserve to get married. They don't deserve to be citizens. They don't deserve to make a living wage, and they don't deserve to have a vote. And if you if you ask some people, like I think it's I think I want to say with the CEO or or, or, or one of the higher ups at Nestle, then uh, if you're too poor, then you don't deserve water. Uh, you know that thing that's mandatory that you need to survive at all. Yeah. Nope. You don't get it unless you pay for it. To which I say, fuck you. And technically, we already do pay for it. We have we have our city's water systems. If you're on a city grid, I mean, I'm sure you have to pay something to maintain a well if you're on well water, that sort of thing. I mean, and even if you're collecting rain, you gotta have some equipment for it, and you gotta upkeep for that one. So technically, you're pretty much paying for water already. But no, corporations want a little bit more from you because they're greedy motherfuckers. Mm. Oh dear. So, yeah, our next, <laughs> oh, we, we get, oh, Kirk Cameron, <laughs> our, our favorite fundamentalist punching bag, or at least Amanda Hoggins. Oh. Fundamentalist actor Kirk Cameron recently urged Christians to embrace Halloween, arguing that it was a holiday that pagans had tried to steal from them. <laughs> Oh my God! What planet does he live on? I don't know, but that, that must—they must have some amazing weed. They must. Oh. Uh, in an interview published by the Christian Post on Monday, Cameron explained that the real origins of Halloween had to do with a Catholic Church tradition of remembering the dead before All Saints' Day. When you go out on Halloween and see all people dressed in costumes and see someone in a great big bobblehead Obama costume with great big ears and an Obama face? Are they honoring him or poking fun? The actor asked. They are poking fun at him. Oh no, somebody is poking fun at the president. Oh my. This is new. Yeah. Cameron observed that mocking President Barack Obama with a Halloween mask was similar to when Christians would dress up in costumes as the devil, ghosts, goblins, and witches precisely to make the point that those things were defeated and overthrown by the resurrected Jesus Christ. Or maybe they're just cute costumes and they're meant to evoke the spirit of the season. You know, that sort of thing. Uh the costumes poke fun at the fact that the devil and other evils were publicly humiliated by Christ at his resurrection, he continued. That's what the scriptures say, that he publicly humiliated the devil when he triumphed over power and principality and put them under his feet. Okay, I it, again, it's been a while since I've read it, but I want to know uh, 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 if you're going to use the Bible, uh, I'm just going to say, cite your source. 
you know, verse, book. Tell me. Come on. You know, book, chapter, verse. Tell me. Uh, but according to Cameron, pagans had tried to claim the Christian holiday for themselves. Over time, you get some pagans who want to go f who want to go, this is our day, our high holy day of satanic church, that this is all about death. But Christians have always known since the first century that death was defeated, that he gave, that the grave was overwhelmed, that ghost goblins, devils are foolish has who used to be in power but not anymore, he insisted. That's the perspective Christians should have. Meanwhile, my girlfriend, might I ask, might I add, she is a Christian, is listening to this, and she is probably broken and fallen off whatever surface that she happens to be listening to this show on. <laughs> Just, oh. I'm so disgusted. Okay, first off, this is the insinuation that Satanism is always associated with paganism, which is just pure ignorance this is just pure fucking egomaniac ignorance of oh my gosh everybody who is not christian is fucking worshiping satan yeah the, so, so does that mean we're worshiping satan because i know sure. i'm christian and, and the I last mean, i checked if, you're not <laughs> if so the, like, these extremists are a representation of the christian god then i will happily take satan because these people are fucking evil yeah it's like god damn it and and the article does go on and 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 it's a good thing they did cuz i don't remember much of my history of halloween historians us universally recognize halloween's origins as dating back to the celtic festival of samhain i think is how you pronounce it oh uh, yeah sounds about right yeah uh i know some pagans will probably correct me in which the ghosts of the dead were said to return to earth for one night it wasn't until over 600 years later that pope boniface the 4th Boniface? 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 That's a hell of a name. Uh, he incorporated the pagan festival into the tradition of All Martyrs Day. And historians believe that the church created the All Saints Day celebration 400 years later in an attempt to replace the festival of Samhain. Samhain, Samhain, whatever. But yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, it was not... Halloween as we may know it may have been co-opted by Christians. Sam no, it, it's it's no, it's pronounced differently. I want to say it's Samhain or Samhain or whatever. So, but it's somebody not... give us a pronunciation guide in the comments. Yes, please. <laughs> but um, but uh, yeah. So the pagans started it. They they have their thing, and then a pope said, "Hey, that looks kind of good. Let's do this." And then they're like, "Oh," and then Christians later are like, "Oh no, that's too deathy and worthy. Uh, we need to do this and and sanitize it and make it suitable for us." Fuck everybody else. Our comfort zone is important. And our comfort zone should be the entire fucking planet. Everybody should fit within our comfort zone. And no one should ever be different. Yeah. Oh. And this one I just put – this next one I put in there because what the fuck? Hmm. A Gary, Indiana man shot and killed a 13-year-old neighbor boy for laughing at him on Friday night. Can we say that escalated quickly? That escalated quickly. Yes, we yes can. apparently we can say that. Yes. According to the Gary Post Tribune, police have not released the shooter's name, but said that he shot Kobe Jones 13 nine times. The boy was pronounced dead at the scene at, by, uh, on, what is it, 6.31 p.m. Friday by the Lake County Coroner's Office. I hear, I see Lake County. I immediately think Florida. Uh, sometimes I forget Gary is actually right there next to Lake Michigan. Gary Police Lieutenant Thomas Powak told the Post Tribune that the gunman's home was broken into and robbed sometime on Friday afternoon. The man arrived home around 5 p.m. and discovered the robbery and flew into a rage. As you know, I, I can't blame him for that. I would be too. As he was having a noisy tantrum in his backyard, a crowd of neighborhood residents gathered. Jones made the mistake of laughing at his neighbor's histronics, which drove the man to even greater heights of rage. Yeah, that, that's a bit of a dick move to laugh at somebody like that. Although, to be fair, maybe they had no idea. You know, maybe the kid had just had no idea why he was raging and thought it looked funny. Uh, you know, I'm willing to give benefit of the doubt here. He's 13. What the fuck does he know yeah. about a guy next door screaming? I know, right? So he, so the guy produced a gun and shot Jones nine times, killing him. The shooter and his girlfriend fled the scene in a car but returned around 7 p.m. and surrendered to police. They're both being, currently being held at Gary City Jail. Charges are reportedly pending. Dude! He's a teenager! 
what the fuck? I was like, no, 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 no. See, I get laughed at sometimes. You know, the kids will sometimes they'll, they'll they'll do little things and they'll laugh at you. They'll laugh at me or whatever. And you know, you know, my first response is to not punch them out the window. That's not my first response. My first response is to give them a glare and tell them to shut the fuck up, and then they do it. Uh, yeah, but but shooting somebody, Jeebus, man, just holy fuck. Shooting a kid, like, you have time between when your hand finds a gun, t- turns off the safety, and pulls the trigger to calm yourself down. Yeah, this guy has... has... And severe anger management issues. And I hope that while he is in jail, they realize this. And while he's serving his time, because you know he's going to serve time. He's going to have to. That that he gets some help for that. Because that would be good. He needs that help. No kidding. I mean, Jesus. yeah. Justifiably angry that somebody robbed him. Sure. I can justify that. Uh, you know, going and yelling and screaming about it for a little bit. Sure. Again, justifiable. Shooting a kid? No. Unless the kid was trying to attack you and, and kill you, no. Uh, oh dear. Oh god. Back to Florida. Take another shot. Felsmere. It's Felsmere, Florida. An argument over pork chops turned violent and bloody between relatives Monday night. Felsmere police arrested Billy Wall for stabbing his nephew with a butcher knife two times in the abdomen. The okay, two... what is it with people flying off the handle on kids? I don't know. Well, well how old is the nephew? Does it say? Uh, I don't think it says. But but uh, the two were apparently arguing over how many pork chops each person would get to eat. Officers responded to the victim's house on Lincoln Street just before 8 o'clock. The victim, Charles Williams, came stumbling out the front door as police arrived. Wall was tracked down and arrested at his neighbor's house a block away. Okay, two things. Number one, pork chop is not that important. They're just not, you, you know, you, you don't you don't need to fight that much over them. I mean, a little argument here or there, sure, but you don't need to go all Mr. Stabby. Don't That doesn't need to happen. Number two, if you know you committed a crime, you know you're going to eventually be looked for, try going further than a block away. You know, just, just saying. Uh, that neighbor, uh, Carolyn Bibbs, told the news reporter that Wall came to her door covered in blood and asking for a change of clothes. He was drenched with blood because I seen it all down his leg, Bibbs said. I ain't giving him no clothes to put on. <laughs> I don't blame you. Police said Walt claimed self-defense as he was being put in handcuffs. He kept saying, I stabbed him, Bibbs said. He, sa- he said he tried to get a machete at me and cut me with a machete and I stabbed him. Okay. Walt was arrested on aggravated battery charges. The Indian River County Sheriff's Office processed the scene and officers recovered the machete. The knife has yet to be recovered. Oh, dear. <laughs> Family members told the news station that Williams had to undergo emergency surgery because of liver damage. Thankfully, the blade barely missed an artery, and Williams is ex- expected to survive, according to his family. The investigation remains active, and additional charges may be filed, according to the police. Again, pork chops are not meant to be serious business. I mean, I mean unless you are starving and haven't eaten for weeks, like, fighting over food yeah. with your own family is just such a level of juvenile i mean if if you are fighting over something like this your family probably has a lot of other problems probably i mean and even in the more even in the poorest situations you know where food is scarce it you don't need to pull out a knife over it dude you just make do with what you can that's all you need man oh fucking idiot hmm oh you know, I said I was not going to drink pop, and I'm already still feeling burpy. Mm. Oh, well. That, that's okay. Uh, our next one is out of Virginia. Yes, Virginia, there really is a Republican congressional candidate who is arguing that homosexuality was not normal because it caused cancer and would eventually have forced gay men to wear diapers by destroying their rectal muscles. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, dear. Oh, so much for any of my faith in humanity. Yeah. On Wednesday, blogger Benjamin Triblett called out Walter Waters for uh, Steve Waters, who was the advisor 
uh, who's the advisor to a Republican, of course, congressional candidate Dave Bratt. Uh, he was called out for several anti-LGBT messages that he had written on Facebook earlier in the day. I will say this. If homosexuality is so normal, how come the diseases, illnesses, and cancers connected with it are so abnormal, he wrote. Even the CDC recognizes this. Uh, let's see. Cancer? Uh, no, that's that's not from gay. No. Um, there are people out there who've had cancer, who have cancer, that probably never touched another, you know, you know, they, they, they probably never had a gay experience in their life. So what, what, what about that one? And forcing gay men to wear what, diapers by destroying the rectal muscles. Um, there, there are plenty of porn stars out there that have, have like the really rough anal sex on screen. They would probably like to have a few words with you. Because as far as I know, they're still fine. You know, just saying. Uh, a second posting by Waters was... is it, Yeah, it is Waters. Uh, I, what was I saying Walters earlier? But a second posting was more graphic. Is it normal for adult males to have to wear diapers because the rectal muscles have been abused so badly they can no longer control or tighten them to avoid pooping their pants? Again... <laughs> You don't really understand how the body works, so maybe you should shut the fuck up. Yeah, I mean, he's got to be, you know, probably close to my age, maybe a little older. He he is an advisor to a congressional candidate. You know, he could be anywhere there. And I'm, I'm going to peg him at 30, just give it a round number. You've basically been in control of when you poop for, let's let's ballpark it about, 27 years let's ballpark because you know you have the few years where you're still getting to learn it your baby and toddler and everything so you you've had this control over for 27 years and you poop almost daily i think by pooping almost daily would wear your would wear your rectum down more than getting than getting ass fucked i i i just just saying because I'm willing to bet you poop more often than, than anal sex would happen to you. Especially if you don't swing that way. It, it's, it's not like uh, women have to go around wearing diapers because they've had penises shoved up there so often mm -hmm. that they can no longer control their pee. Exactly. Although if they shove them up there and they go up that hole, then oh god. Ugh, I don't even want to think about it. But the point is, yeah, nobody's having to wear diapers for it. And if they are, then somebody did it wrong. It, it, that's all there is to it. So if, if they're having to wear diapers because of, like, prolapse, colons, and rectums and shit, then um, you're doing it wrong. Oh. After Tribbett reposted the remarks on his Facebook page, Waters defended himself. I've got history, natural law, and biology on my side on this one, he insisted. <laughs> Sorry, he just doesn't. He just doesn't. No. What do you guys have? Emotion? You should know emotion doesn't work well in public policy, but I'll concede one accusation. I'm not normal. My wife would agree with, on, with some on... With on... My wife, my wife would agree with on some days, lol. Uh, with... Uh, ah! Fucking... Uh, I, 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 I know that's quoted directly from the post, so it's it's not the article's fault. It's, it's more Steve Waters' fault. Dude! You're a con you're a congressional advisor, you know. You know, just just. Uh, I would think you would have a good grasp on the English language. Uh, just uh, you would uh, be wrong. Uh, obviously, an emotion doesn't work well in public policy. Um, try say try try telling that to all the fear mongers that work for your side, Fox News. Yeah, emotion doesn't work well. That's that's why these old Christ white crusty motherfuckers get scared into voting Republican. So I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Ah, uh, ah, uh, goddamn. When pressed for evidence on his diaper theory, Waters produced a link to a Christian website that claims homosexuality is brimming with disease, but does not mention anything about ab abused rectal muscles or diapering. Uh, of course, it's brimming with disease. Uh, no, it's not. If it was, I would have been screwed, <laughs> like, two years ago. Not from my own personal one, but the person I was dating was bisexual, and she had a homosexual encounter while she was dating me. Yeah, I explained way too much. <clears throat> he eventually offered a link to the anti-LGBT group 
rights group, the Family Research Council, which did not mention diapers, but it did say that gay men were at risk for having to wear a colostomy bag from fisting each other. Ah, no. F fisting and anal, kind of different. Um... Yeah. I mean, and yeah, their fists can fit in there. I've seen it. Uh, but just, again, if if... if if you're having to wear a colostomy bag from it, you're doing it wrong. Dang, or, uh, I can't even. And it also implies that only gay people do that. Yeah. Um, again, this guy must not watch porn. Because there, there are porn videos of women having anal sex everywhere. There are women getting double penetrated, and quite roughly, I might add. So and they seem to walk away no worse for the wear. So your your theory's kind of not holding water here. Alright? Just just uh, uh although the good thing is he did try give up trying to convince commenters of his of his theory. Uh because yeah, this is the internet. When when a certain side takes takes when a certain group takes a side and they decide to run with it uh, there's really nothing that can happen that's going to convince them otherwise, regardless of what it is, whether it's right or wrong. <clears throat> regardless of, you know, facts and truth. Yes. Oh, dear. Hmm. Our next one is out of Oklahoma. Oklahoma's Supreme Court has ruled that when it comes to informing a man that he is about to become a father, a Facebook post doesn't cut it, legally speaking. In this case, a woman had a three-month fling with a man named Billy McCall in 2011, then realized she was pregnant after they broke things off, reports The Oklahoman. She sent him a Facebook message informing of the big news, gave birth in 2012, then immediately put the baby up for adoption. McCall says he never saw the Facebook post and learned about the baby only after it was born, explains the courthouse news service. Lower courts declared that McCall's parental rights had been terminated, but the Supreme Court disagreed. This court is unwilling to declare notice via Facebook alone sufficient to meet the requirements of the due processes, cla due processes clauses of the United States and Oklahoma constitutions, wrote a justice in the majority opinion, according to the Wall Street Journal. A dissenting justice wondered why Facebook should be considered different than other forms of communications. You know, letters can remain unopened, faxes can be lost, but no matter. The issue now goes back to the lower courts to determine whether McCall still has fatherly rights to the child. The toddler is now two years old and has been living with the same adoptive parents since birth. In other Facebook legal news, parents might be responsible for their kids' posts. Remember that sentence. We will revisit it later. Ah. But, yeah, I, I have to agree with the dissenting judge. You know, yeah, you can send a letter. It could remain unopened. It could get lost in the mail. Faxes could be lost in communication. It could, you know, it could get sent to the wrong number. You know, what makes a Facebook post that different, you know? I mean, yeah, you may not see it, but you may not also see it in other ways, too. Is, is there some difference that makes Facebook posts, you know, Facebook notifications that much less than a postal, you know, a, a letter or a fax that I'm missing? Well, I would I would guess it would be because, um, like, you have your address and your phone number listed on legal documents. Hmm. Which... Therefore, you are – those are places where you should be, like, officially allowed to be contacted at because it's on your bills and it's how, like, records keepers, like, say, your voting record is, has you listed at that address. So legally, that's your address. Whereas Facebook, people don't even have Facebook, so you can't use that as a solid form of communication because you could deactivate your account at any time. Yeah. Although, by the same token, you could move and just not tell anybody, too. Yeah, but eventually <laughs> that would get processed in the system somewhere. In yeah. The, the big legal system because you would have to notify somebody at some point in time that your legal address had changed. Yeah. Because there, there are, like, bank accounts that you can't have without a legal address. Like, your address is your life, pretty much. Yeah, and I can see that on the legal side, but at the same time, it's like, it's not like she didn't didn't let him know. She told him. She made an attempt, and maybe that was the only way she knew to get a hold of him. Maybe she didn't have his number or a fax or his address or whatever. 
that could have been the only way she knew to get a hold of him. Maybe, but if it were me... Okay, they've been seeing each other for three months and she didn't have his phone number? Really? Yeah. yeah. It, That's she could, have lost, she could have lost it. Or maybe he changed it. True, true. So there, but, there's, there's so many variables here. <laughs> right, and, and I don't feel like we have the whole story in order to really like make a judgment. Because do, did she only try and contact him the one time about his child? Like, we don't know. We don't know if, you know, she made an announcement or that he could have easily missed in his Facebook feed. Or did she send him a message? We don't know. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I, 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 I told you guys to keep the last sentence of this article um, in mind. And that's the parents might be responsible for their kids' posts. That leads right into this next story. Parents who don't already pay close attention to their kids' Facebook posts may want to start. Georgia's Court of Appeals says parents may be liable for their children's online activity after a couple did not force their son to delete a defamatory Facebook profile, the Wall Street Journal reports. According to court documents, the boy and another student created the fake page depicting a female classmate back in 2011. The page allegedly claimed the girl was a lesbian, falsely described illegal drug use, promiscuous behavior, and racist views, and featured an altered and unattractive profile photo, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution reports. Ooh, Burp wanted to come up, but it didn't. The girl's parents, Amy and Christopher Boston, complained to the student's school, which handed out an in-school suspension. But when the page was still alive 11 months later, the Bostons decided to sue. Sandra and Michael Atharn, Atharn, whatever, had grounded their son for a week after the school notified them about the page. But the Atharns were negligent in failing to compel their son to remove the Facebook page once they were notified of his existence. Jo Judge John J. Ellington writes in the decision. Therefore, a jury could find that the Atharnians' negligence proximately approximately well, blah, blah, caused some part of the girl's victimization. The case likely marks a legal precedent, says uh, Edgar S. Mag Magnifico Jr., who represented the boy's parents and knows of no other case in which a court found parents liable for their kids' online behavior. The court did, however, dismiss one part of the suit, arguing that the Athenians were negligent in allowing the page to be posted at all. Still, Magne Magnifico Jr. says he'll, he will appeal to the Georgia Supreme Court. The other student who allegedly helped create the page and her parents were also sued, but did not respond and were found in default. Okay. You, your parents, let, let, let's say you have a kid, and this kid pulls this kind of bullshit, and you get found out. And you punish the kid, you know, in this way. You, you, you ground them. And this is another one of those things, it's like, okay, did the parents, did the parents actually make an attempt to get their son to take down the page. That's what this is not telling me here. Because if they actually were, and they actually got him to do it, but if he put it back up later, then that's not really the fault of the parents. That's just the kid being a dick and going against the parents. But I, I just have a feeling, that, especially if this is Georgia, I have a feeling the parents at least, I'm willing to bet the parents at least tried to get their son to take the page down. And it's uh, – the page going up, uh, 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 the harassment thing, not cool. Not cool at all. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of losing – Kat, what, you have something here. Cyberbullying, it's terrible. If, yes. Uh, honestly, honestly, um, you learn this from people, and it just makes me wonder, okay, these two kids, they're obviously little shitheads. Where did they learn to be little shitheads? Hmm could be from the parents yes. not saying it is not saying it isn't i'm just saying you learn these traits these qualities from someplace so i don't have that much faith that the parents tried to get them to take it down because i i wonder if they picked up on being a bullying douchebag from the parents and yeah. and honestly if the parents were that invested in preventing or stopping the bullying from happening they would have done more than just you're grounded for a week yeah so so you you do have that point there ah uh, because because i i'm like seeing like multiple sides on this on the part of those parents because it's like what if they did try what if they didn't try and 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 you do and you do bring up the point you know that that yeah they have to learn it from somewhere and it's most and, and likely going to be the parents 
kids can be total shitheads. I mean, sometimes the parents really don't have control of, over that. And it does suck that the parents could potentially be held accountable for something that maybe they really did try and stop it. Maybe they had no idea that the page went back up. Um, maybe they didn't understand the gravity of what it means to have cyberbullying happen. Maybe they just didn't know, you know, and it sucks that they would be held accountable for someone who probably sees themselves as just, hey, it's a free country. I can say whatever I want, even though I'm a terrible little dish, yeah. little douche. Um, <laughs> and, and it sucks that they're, they're held accountable for that, but absolutely they have influence on this kid. The school cannot force them to take it down. The other the other kid's parents can't force them to take it down. They have to force their kid to take it down. And they have to, if they know something like this has been happening, you know, at least once, then chances are it's going to happen again or it's already happened again before. And yeah. they have the responsibility to, to monitor their kid and make sure that it doesn't happen again. Exactly. And and there's one other angle that I, I just thought of while you were while you were uh, talking there. They could also report it to Facebook, and Facebook could do something about it. Although, unless it's something like a woman breastfeeding a baby, they probably won't do anything about it. <clears throat> but you know what? It's worth a shot. But you know, and that's not to say, and that's not to say, you know, that that because that whether this was done or not, who knows? You know, maybe they tried in Facebook. <laughs> maybe I was right in my assessment. Maybe Facebook was like, eh, we don't give a shit. Oh, is it is it a woman breastfeeding a baby? Does it does it have any way of involving a uh, woman nipples? No. Okay. We'll we'll just go back to watch you know to playing Flappy Bird or something, you know, something like that. Just like. like it, it just kills me because cyberbullying is so important. Mm. Bullying at all is so important because it has consequences that you might not see right away, but they will affect you for the rest of your life. Oh, um, yeah. we, You know, we have people who kill themselves every single day because of bullying. Mm -hmm. And I honestly don't think that a, a short in-school suspension and being grounded for a week is nearly severe enough. No. And if the parents don't see it that way, they're going to learn real fast by having to go to court that bullying is a big deal. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just – oh, god. I mean hell, I'm just remembered of like – I mean you get, you get bullies. You get the thing in their head with the power and everything, and if it's not dealt with, then they get out of school and they go out into the world and they think they could just bully people into doing whatever they want. And, and, and they start trying to bully women into making videos, doing certain bodily things. And, and yes, and yes, I know everybody who listens to this understands the reference. I need not name the person. Right. Uh, uh, so, so, so yeah, you get, you get people like that. And, and the psychological damage that the victim takes is – I'm not saying it's permanent or that it's forever, but it's there. Yeah. You know, like I was – bullied in school a lot of people that i saw i saw a lot of bullying going on in high school and if you don't think that i still think about it all the time i do it's yeah. so scary to think about um and to see people still doing it in the workplace they're fucking grown-ups and if you don't teach the lesson that bullying is wrong that's what they're going to grow up and do they're going to grow up thinking that that's okay they're never going to learn yeah and and uh that just that just means you know we're just getting closer to the drain. A little closer, a little closer, making the swirl around the drain, and we can stop this. We can actually stop this if if we do things like oh you know teaching kids you know future generations that bullying is wrong and to knock that shit off, among other things. And and I think honestly we're in a much better place than we were even ten or fifteen years ago. I, I think it's we've become much more aware of it yeah. um, because of social media where we can say, hey, look at all these cases. There's so much more light being shown on it, but it's we're not there yet. We're not there yet. And we have to keep working at it as a society to try and improve how we deal with it. Oh, yeah. So and, it, and it starts in the home. It really does. Mm -hmm. You can get bullied at school all the time. But it takes the parents because the parents are the ones who have control in the rest of your life. You're only at school for however many hours a day, and then everything else is the parents. Mm -hmm. uh, that is pretty much it. And with that, we are actually coming up on time for this week. Oh, there was like one story left, and, and I would try and crunch it in, but it's like kind of long. 
But <laughs> so so I'll save it for next week. But um yeah, so that that is going to be it for this show. Thank you guys for listening. Uh Kat, if we wanted to find you on social media, where could we find you? You can find me not bullying people on social media at Twitter at LabyrinthCat and Facebook.com slash NerdistCat. And you can find me um, on my other show, What the Fuck, at 1201 Beyond. And you can find me on my other other show, my main show, Nerd to the Third Power, over on That Guy with the Glasses under the podcast tab. Sweet. And also you can find me in Space Ninja, which you can buy over on NeonHarbor.com. Yes, go buy it. Go do it. Amazing. Yes. And me, hopefully this is going to be the last time I go on this longer spiel because we're still still working on getting the uh, uh, updated audio bumpers for all of this going on. So you can find me on social media at Gomer21XX on Twitter and on Tumblr. You can find my stuff at RTGomer.com and NerdVice.com. And if you like this show and you want to help support the show monetarily, especially very directly, you can go over to Patreon.com slash Gomer21XX. For as little as $1 per production, you get things like behind-the-scenes vlogs every month. You get little previews of things. So uh, like, like my patrons actually got a preview of the new title card, um, you know, before everybody else did. Not obviously not counting co hosts, because of course they've got to see it. But but um so you get little things like that. Little things here and there that I'm gonna try and work up on. And of course if you give more than one dollar per production, then you get some other cool things. Um I've actually got another review I'm working on because somebody's up at the highest tier and that's one of the things you can request is an actual review and oh boy <laughs> My patrons like to torture me. But I'm a masochist, so I can deal with it. Uh, speaking of speaking of masochists, I'm actually dating a masochist, and and she is a talented artist and award-winning animator, Becky Hopkins. Uh, you can find her Patreon again over at Patreon.com/slash Becky Hop. Uh, throw some money at her, you'll get some artwork out of it. She she'll do title cards for you, she'll do sketches, whatever. And if you throw enough money at her, she'll do a 30-second animation straight for your face, and it's worth it. Let me tell you. There, there's a reason why she's an award-winning animator. So again, that's patreon.com slash beckyhop. Mine is at patreon.com slash gomer21xx. Um, and with that, we are going to get out of here for this week. Thank you guys for listening, and until next time, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, with a cat, signing off. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.